Okay, and then point number four, how to be joyful and free like Jesus. Now this passage talks about two ways. The first way is all you who are weary and burdened come to me you find rest. So the first thing is, when we have burdens and worries, come to Jesus. Now yesterday, yesterday I talked about the prayer of grace, do you remember? Can you, can you, can you, can you name a prayer of grace for me? Anyone here? Anyone? Anyone remember? Now prayer of grace is saying what God is giving us, how he blesses us. So can you give me one example? Are you trying to say? Anyone? You what try? Is he trying what to say? Listen to him. See, yeah. see what? That is God is oh, what is that again? That is God is is this, are you speaking English? God is yes. powerful. God is powerful, okay? Yeah, that's good. Now, God is powerful, it's good. But it's better to be more personal. God is powerful, he can help me with my problems. Now, it's more to me. So, Okay, now say it with me, say it with him. God loves me and cares about me. Everyone say it. God is with me all the time. God is giving me strength. God is giving me joy and freedom. God forgives all my sins. God accepts me how I am. God is laying his hand upon me to bless me. Now this prayer of grace will give us strength. I hope every day when you wake up, and for many times a day, you keep saying and believing, it's like, God is here in front of me. Now notice my change my tone of voice. God is in front of me and blessing me. God is laying his hand upon me. God is happy when I pray to him. And God cares about me. And then we we'll respond with pray, uh, prayer of worship. I love Jesus. I hold on to Jesus. I need Jesus. I want Jesus. I like Jesus. Now notice how I say, I like Jesus. Now when you are like that, then you're coming to Jesus and you find rest. Now yes, So I'm showing I'm showing people how to come to God. How to have faith in God. Let me, let me tell you my definition of faith. Now some people say faith is like this. Some people say faith is like this. 
you have to believe, believe very hard, believe, believe. Kiriza, 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 abamu, gagamu. But I will say it like this. Nayenze njokila kwenye. When God promised, I trust in Him. Katonda bwa asubiza, mwesiga. When God, when God works, I relax. Ena katonda bwa kora, ndisa nyuka. Now, ask Him to say it with you. When God promised, I trust in Him. Say it. Ndikati agambi, nito gambi wote, eh? Ndikatonda bwa asubiza, mukiririza. When God works, I relax. Ndikatonda bwa kora, ne yagala. So when I pray for people, I've relaxed. God will work. Because the Bible says in Philippians 4:11. Now, so I'm now talking about how. We can be free. First, come to God. Come to God with faith in His grace and His promises. God will work according to His promises. He promised to be with me and he will always be with me. He promised to give me joy and I can experience joy. Like yesterday, many people experience joy. So that way, when I come to God, I have strength and joy and freedom. And then verse 29, it talks about the second step. There Jesus said, take my yoke upon me and learn from me, and then you'll find rest in your soul. Now the first step is just come to God. Lord, help me. Thank you. You're loving me. The first step is just coming to God for help. And the second step is to start to take up responsibilities. That we take the yoke of Jesus. The yoke is the yoke is like the yoke on the the shoulder of the cow to pull a plow or pull a cart. So Jesus is saying, take my yoke, that means to serve with me. To serve God together with me. When you have the life of Jesus, the joy of Jesus, and then you want to serve people, bless people. And also learn from Jesus. So it's not just coming to Jesus. But to learn his way of thinking his life. Learn the gentleness and the humbleness of Jesus. Learn the faith of Jesus. And learn how Jesus trusts in God. So when you read the Gospels and see how Jesus talks, you learn how, you know, his heart. Then we have the faith like Jesus. 
and have the relaxation like Jesus. And that way, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. And that way Jesus said, then you'll find rest in your soul. Now you compare verse 28 and 29, the two times he mentioned rest. In verse 28 he says, come to me and you'll find rest. That's the first And in verse 29 he talk about Take the yoke of Jesus and learn from Jesus. And then you'll find rest in your soul. Rest means that rest means it is not your work. It's Jesus working. So I just do my part to pray for people and to teach people and Jesus will change them. So I can rest and relax. I don't have to worry about the result. I don't have to carry the burden of ministry. Oh, it's so I don't want to say it's hard to change people. Because I'll find people changed by God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask you, after you hear me yesterday and today. Do you like Jesus more? Yes. How many of you like Jesus more? Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask you. How many of you like to serve Jesus more? How many of you like to serve Jesus more? Praise the Lord. And then how many of you like to pray to Jesus and love Jesus more? Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you find more relaxed? How many of you are more relaxed? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. And you say, Oh, yes. Raise your hand up. Yes. Yes. Yes, so in the morning, yes, so at the noon time, yes, so, yes, so, yes, so when the sun goes down, yes, so. I'm more relaxed. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm more relaxed. I'm more relaxed. Now, wait. I'm more relaxed. I'm more joyful. I'm more happy. I can enjoy God. I can enjoy life. I like Jesus more. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Now, now, okay. now, so what I'm saying is there are two degrees of rest in Jesus. The first is when we come to Jesus and ask for help. And the second is 
Take the yoke of Jesus. Learn from the life of Jesus. And you'll find rest in your soul. It's a deeper rest. And no God is in control. I know God is powerful. I know God cares about me. I know God is going to use me. And then he'll raise up my life higher and higher. So I can relax more. Hallelujah. Now notice I'm quoting the Bible verse to explain it. I'm helping to people to understand the Bible verse more clearly. And how to apply it to your life. And how you like the word of God more. So I hope you go home and read these verses again. Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30. Okay, now just now I talk about the fourth point how to have this peace and joy and rest in Jesus. And then the fifth point is challenge. Now, you have heard what I said this morning. You have heard what I said this morning. How in Jesus there's rest and peace and joy. Let me ask you, do you want to live like that? Do you want to live like that? Do you? Yes. Do you want to put down your burdens? Do you want to put down your burdens? Yes. Do you want to continue carrying your burdens? <laughs> Everyone here has the right to live a joyful, peaceful, restful life in Jesus. Jesus has prepared for you a joyful and peaceful and a, a, a free life. A life to be pleasing to God and to people. A life to bless many people. To live out the nature of God. To live like Jesus. Is it very difficult? No. Let me ask you. You stand up right now. Now, I'll conclude this. Now, close your eyes. Relax in Jesus. And then you, de and then you declare, Jesus is with me now. So tell me to stay with you. Jesus is with me now. Yes, I didn't Now you can raise up your hand. Jesus is with me now. Yes, I Jesus is with me now. Yes, I Jesus is blessing me now. Jesus is giving me peace and joy and love. Yes, I'm part of the Mokisa no Father and the Son. I can enjoy God's peace and love and joy. Sobora, Oku Gabana, Oku Oka Quakatonda, Nesanu. I can enjoy God all the days of my life. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to live in burden anymore. Sagala mubere no nemi gugu. Uriranga ojino kwe yagara. I can live a peaceful and joyful life. Oh, we didn't get that. Oh, we didn't sign you. Oh, so we are going to be I can come to Jesus every day and find rest. Ela, so we are going to go to God. Oh, we are going to I can learn from. I can take the yoke of Jesus. So we are going to have the victory of Jesus. And learn from Jesus. Ela, we are going to go to Jesus. God is in control. I relax in Him. Yes, everyone sing. Yes, 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 Now let me ask you this question. Do you want to put your burdens of the family down? In the hand of God. Oh, ya gara okutwara emi gugu jone je chika cho wansi mumaso gakatona. Do you think you can do a better job, or Jesus can do a better job? Ero sobo o chimani o sobo o kukola o mori mo morunji ngagwe Yesu gwe yakola. Who can do a better job? Ana yon ayi zoko o mori mo morunji. Is it you or Jesus? Yegwe oba Yesu. Yes. So can you put down all your burdens in his hand? Now raise your hand to Jesus. Raise your hand to Jesus. Raise your hand to Jesus. I put my burdens in your hands. Can tell them the same. Tell them the same. I put all my worries in the hands of Jesus. Oh, put your hand up, come now, come on, Jesus. I put the burdens of ministry in the hands of God. Em, em, we go, go. E yo wele zangi, tat demu kono jakatonda. I don't have to worry anymore. Si no kuchena te. When I trust in God more. E da we na yesi ga yesi nyo. I have more joy. I have more strength. I have better resource of ministry. I have better resource Do you have the? Can you have the peace and the joy of the Lord every day? Ha 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 ha! Everyone! Ha 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 ha
Now let me ask you, do you like to live like this? Yes. Do you want to carry your burdens or let Jesus carry your burdens? Yes. You know, Jesus makes me be able to learn how to talk about Jesus more joyfully. When I teach like this, people are touched by God more, right? You like God more, right? So that way, I have less burden. It's not my burden. Do you want to serve God like that? Do you want to serve God like that? And also in my family, I'm more relaxed. I'm more, I'm more peaceful. And I love my family members. And they're, they're, they're changed by God more. God is in my life. God is in my ministry. So do you want to live like that? Do you want to live like that? Now, now I hope you remember this. This is not a message today, just a one-time message. This is a message for your life. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the message again, to the, to the points, remember? So what I did was, first I have the introduction to let people know how painful it is with burdens to raise the interest of people and, and how we can have the joy of the Lord and free in the Lord, freedom in the Lord. And then the first point in the message is the problem of people, how many people are burdened uh, how many people have worries? And life is very difficult. And then I talk about God's nature. He has a lot of things to do. Many people did not obey him. But God is not burdened. God is not burdened. And God continues to be joyful. And then number three, why do people, why can't people have this joy of the Lord? And then number four is how people can have the joy and the freedom of the Lord. And then number five, to challenge the people. To encourage them to have this lifestyle of living in the joy of the Lord. Now this way of preaching you can apply in many messages. Okay. Now, do you have any question? I can. Okay. Now I can use. 
A simple illustration just to illustrate the points. Like if I want to preach about the holiness of God. Okay, and then introduction I can say when people are not holy, when they follow the lifestyle of the world. And we can see churches break down. Uh, and we can see Christians' marriage breaks down. So that's the introduction. And then people's problem. People's problem is that it's natural for us to sin. Natural uh, for us to sin. It is hard for people to overcome the sins. So people are easily controlled by the sins. And they have the habit of sinning. And then sins destroy their life. And then God's nature. God is holy. And in heaven, all the saints are joyful and full of love. In heaven, the people there are full of joy and the holiness of God. They don't sin anymore. And they live in joy and love. So holiness is beautiful. And then the third point, why do people stay in sins? First, because many people think sin is fun. And also people, you know, they... They think that worry is not sin, they think hatred is not sin, negative thinking is not sin. And even some Christians think adultery is not so bad. They, they think adultery is not so bad. Okay, so this is the reason why people stay in sin. And they have the habit of living in sin. Okay, number four, how we can have holiness of God. First, we know that God's holiness is very beautiful. And then living in holiness is very beautiful. And sins are destructive. Sins are very destructive. If we read to, you know, uh, to uh, sin, to lust, to, then it will reap corruption. And then when we know sins are destructive, we hate sin. I don't want to be angry with people. I don't want to have resentment, anger in me. I don't want to live in adultery. You know, for instance, if I commit adultery, I would destroy my life and my ministry. I don't want to give the devil a foothold to steal from me. So any moment any sinful thought came to me, I say this is destructive. It would destroy my life. If I find that I don't like someone, 
Ah, uh, when chuguli langa chinsi jide ni chinga manti puti na gundi simu agala. You mean I say this is destructive? Ah, uh, mbagira wonga manti chino chagalo kunsanya wo. Even someone has problem. No muntu no bavanga arimo bizibu. I don't want to think about his problems. Saga rokuroza nyoku bizibu bi. I want to care about him. Ah, njaga rokumufa ako. I want to put down my anger. I have compassion on him because he has been hurt by people. So I forgive the person and bless the person. So anytime any sinful thought came to me, immediately I take care of it in my mind already. That's the key to victory to sins. If I see any a sexy, beautiful woman, and if I notice any lust in me, in me I say this is destructive I want to look at this person just as a person not as a sexy object so in my mind I just want to bless the person and have a holy thoughts so, so this are some way to overcome sins you know that when the sins come in I'll take care of it in my mind so and then a challenge to you is do you want to Hate sins. Do you want to hate sins? Uh, do you believe that sins are destructive? Oh, yes. Sins will steal from you. Oh, Sins will give the devil a foothold to enter your life. And then any moment any sin appear in our mind, immediately we hate it. And we ask God for help. And we choose to obey God. So this is the key to victory over sin. Now this is just, now this is just very simple to help you understand how to preach a different sermon about holiness of God. And then we'll challenge people to live a holy life. But we want to live in a holy life with the grace of God not, not in a burdened way when we encourage people to live in a holy life we don't say you have to be holy we encourage encouraged by the grace of God God has a lot of blessings ready for you when you love God and live a holy life, all these persons will come to you. But if you sin, you take away the blessings of God. So do you want, you know, do you want the blessings of God? Or do you want to think that you have the fun of sinning? Okay, so now you see, so this is a different message. So the pastor is any question about this? Matter? Okay, now this is just, uh, you know, a simple introduction, but you can ask me questions afterwards. Okay, now. Um, 
Yesterday we talked about praying for each other. And then, you know, today you can practice praying for one another. And then ask the person if he has experienced anything during um, the prayer. Okay, so the pastors, I can talk with you and then listen to you and see how it is, whether you understand this method of preaching, anyone, the teachers and the pastors. And then the rest of the people who don't have evil spirit can lay hand two by two, lay hand on one person, and then ask the person if he has experienced the Holy Spirit. And then when you pray for the person, it's not by many words, it's by loving God. Because when, when you practice doing it, then you can go home and do it. And I hope the pastors will train your people to do that. Okay. Now you say one person here. I just want to do one person. I just demonstrate how I pray for people again. Any one person. Okay. Then you hunger for God. Then you hunger for God. Then you come out. Okay. Any one person? You can come out. Anyone? Jangu. Okay. Come on. Jangu. So this is how you do it. Okay. okay, now you close your eyes. Close your eyes. And then for myself, when I pray for him, I, it's like I think of God loving me. And God is with me. And I believe God is blessing us. And I'm relaxing God. I'm trusting God. Okay. And I love God. And let my spirit like like flying to God. And then I lay hand, I feel my spirit like flying to God, feeling. And then I lay hand on him. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So say simple things. Jesus, we love you. We trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We rely on Jesus. Jesus, come to forgive our sins. Please forgive our sins. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Give us eternal life. We need Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. God is wonderful. God is full of blessings. Hallelujah. I can relax in God. I relax in God. I enjoy God louder for the people. I enjoy God. Hallelujah. 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 So it's simple things. We don't have to say many things. And God knows his needs. God knows his needs. God will, you know, when we come to the presence of God, God will bless him according to his needs. Oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. We are the Fill him with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Take away all the burdens. Take away all the burdens. Oh, set him free. Set him free. Hallelujah. Set him free. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So basically it's very just coming to God, enjoying God. Uh, now, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Um, say, say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you experienced something? Can you tell uh, Speak loudly. Yes. Well, uh, while you were praying, I felt the presence of God. I was feeling the wind blowing in my life. Uh, the wind was taking me on the other side and the other side. That's what I have experienced. How about in your heart and over your body? Have you experienced um, something? What you in your heart? Um, Can you hear? I have experienced change in my life. Do you feel like burdens go away or more free? What you show the day and game you go to Java then a jungle you go far go bang over ya sumurukse. Yes. Uh -huh. How about, do you feel comfort to your body? Yes. Now this are what we talked about yesterday. The peace of God and the burdens go away and the comfort to the body. Okay. Okay. And you see that God's very real. Do you want Jesus to bless your whole life? Okay, so you can love God and serve God, He'll bless your whole life. And you can, uh, and you can pray for people. Now we can go Okay, okay, you can go back. So, now, so the pastors can take your seat, come out here, and I will listen to you about, you know, preaching. And then the rest of the people you find a part of. A woman find a woman, a man find a man. And then you pray for about two minutes. And then you say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then uh, if you have experienced something, then you tell them that Jesus has blessed you. And then take turn, and then the other person will pray for you. So when you get used to doing it, then you can pray for other people. Okay.